Good morning, happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to my subscribers and a special welcome to you new viewers. Today we're gonna to be doing something special. We're gonna be doing corned beef and cabbage in the crock pot. There's a lot of recipes for this because corned beef is really easy to cook. So what I've got in my crock pot already is one just yellow onion. You can see them down in there all chopped up, just rough chop, nothing big. And I kind of leave them in big chunks because I want them to hold, I don't want them to melt away. On top of that, I've got some red skin potatoes. You can see that they're quartered. Uh, anywhere from eight to 10 on that. It's really gonna depend on the size of your crock pot and also how much uh, potatoes you like. Then I have my corned beef. Now I'm gonna slide this out and grab the spice pack. We'll get back to this guy in a minute. These juices are part of the beef. It is totally fine to put those in there. In fact, even the packaging recommends it. So that's one package and this happened to be four and a half pounds. Uh, you can see how much meat that is. I'm gonna do a quick rinse of my hands and then we will add beer, spice pack, and we'll be ready to go. All right, a um, couple of things just before we jump in. I don't add any spices to this other than the spice blend. There really shouldn't be any need for this. Remember, this is corned beef, so it's gonna take care of the spice blend for you with the packaging that uh, came with these little spices here. Uh, if you have to, you could use peppercorns or maybe some whole pepper. This is a one can of Irish stout. This happens to be Guinness, but you know, you use Smithwick's or whatever the heck floats your boat. If you don't like beer uh, in your corned beef, you can use plain old water. That's one, and I'm gonna go in with the second one. The idea is to keep the meat moist. And then if it's still not quite to the top, I'll top it with some water. Uh, but I don't think that's gonna be necessary. I think it's close enough usually with, with this, the way it is, and I think that's fine. If it gets a little dry, I'll have my water sitting here. And while I'm at work, my wife can toss a little water on there. Finally, our spice blend. And this just comes with the manufacturer, just throw it right on top. So they put that in there for us. That's pretty much it. Cover, cook on high, eight hours, and then we'll come back and you're wondering, well, where the heck's the cabbage? The cabbage goes in last because it cooks very quickly um, and we're cooking on high. So at the eight hour mark, we'll come back and we'll finish this off. See you then. All right, it's been eight hours later. Eight hours later. Mm -hmm. You like that, don't you? You can see that uh, I've cut it up a little bit and it's definitely done, but we're gonna cook it for another hour. Why? Because I gotta put in the cabbage. You can't have corned beef and cabbage without putting some cabbage in. So this is one big old head of cabbage. Squeezing it in there nice and tight. Don't worry, it will wilt down. Another hour on high. Let's check it out. It's been a little over an hour and that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything if we put it a little longer. You can see that the uh, cabbage has wilted down, which is exactly what we want. You can also see that the corned beef is very much pull apart friendly, as you can see. So it's good. Let's serve it up. I like my stuff in a bowl. Feel free to put it on a plate. Get down in there and let's find some of those nice yummy potatoes to go with it. Corned beef and cabbage. I like to serve it with a side of soda bread with a bit of butter. And there you go. Corned beef and cabbage. Potatoes in there as well, but it's typically corned beef and cabbage. You can also throw carrots in if you like. Give this a shot. Let me know what you think. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Otherwise, you know the drill. Subscribe, share, like, comments below. And I hope you come back for the next one. Take care.